Hello, I'm Coach Eric Hayes, head boys basketball coach at Jefferson High School, and you're watching the Tampa Bay Community Network. Well, hello, Tampa Bay, and welcome to the Tampa Bay Community Network Sports Talk. I'm your host, Coach Chuck White, and my guest is Coach Eric Hayes. Coach Hayes is the boys' head basketball coach of Jefferson High School Fighting Dragons, and he's been coaching overall for 14 illustrious years, and three of those has been at Jefferson High School. But first of all, let me just say, Coach Hayes, welcome to the show. What is it about coaching that you've always enjoyed? But uh, first of all, I want to commend you for all of the things that you have enjoyed uh, as a coach during your 14 years experience. So maybe we'll just start off by talking about some of the early experiences that you've had in basketball and at your early age, and how did you get started? Why don't you go from there? Well, basically, I started with basketball probably around the age of three. Uh, my father would take me to basketball games with him. So back then, I don't think I knew too much about what was going on, mm -hmm. but I knew I got a chance to spend time with my dad, plus I got a chance to go to, go to the concession stand and different things like that. <laughs> uh, but over the time, uh, I guess as years progressed, uh, I couldn't run around and play, so I had to sit next to him. So eventually I started watching and taking a liking to it. And, it, you know, it just grew the more I was around the game. Well, I might say you probably like that concession stand about as well <laughs> or as much as the De basketball game. Definitely in the early years. So yeah. that's the thing that motivated him to keep you calm while you went to the game. Yes, sir. So was that a real good experience or was it a bad experience for you at the time? Uh, it was a great experience. Like I said, uh, I took a liking to sports at a very young age, not only uh, basketball but other sports as well. And my father being a big sports fan himself, he took me to Buccaneers games. He took me to when the Tampa Tarpons used to play baseball games, uh, high school basketball games, uh, we went to USF games. Uh, so he, he took me to a lot of different sporting events. And just that, I guess, my, his love for sports kind of uh, engulfed me as well. And I became a person who loved all sports. Tampa Toppins, wow, that's, that's going back some time. Mm -hmm. Now, what about your playing experiences? Start at the earliest level when you start playing basketball. All right, I started playing basketball when I was nine years old. I, was, I played at the Ebor City Boys and Girls Club. Uh, the Jose Lanazo branch, that was, that's what it was called before it was closed down. Uh, my first coach, his name was Buford Mills. Mm -hmm. uh, he coached me when I was nine and 10, and then Coach Bobby Wiles became my coach mm -hmm. my next couple years because I played small fry basketball for him. So that is how I got started in the game. I didn't know very much about Coach Buford or uh, whomever, mm -hmm. but Coach Bobby Wiles, he is still the talk of sports today. <laughs> He had he did it in football yes, and basketball, and, and Bobby was a great player himself. First of all, at Blake High School, yes, sir. he both played he played both football and basketball. So I guess he carried over into his coaching. Yes, sir. Did you enjoy the type of coaching Bobby did, or did you have that he put the field? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. At the time, I will say this: at the time, sometimes. You know, you didn't enjoy it, but the old, as you get older and you uh, mature, you understand why coaches uh, did certain things, why they made you run the extra laps, why they made you do extra push-ups and different things like that uh, to make you to make you a better per not just a better player, but a better person. And you know, I look back at the stuff he did, and I find myself doing some of the stuff that he did. You know, to my with my players now is 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 funny, but. It, it, it comes full circle, and I have to stop myself sometimes and say, 
wait, I'm not Coach Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> or any of my other coaches. Uh, right. Keep but moving forward. Coach Wiles got the job done, and I yeah. know you've got the job done too. What about some of the teams that uh, you played on? Can you remember some of the players or uh, anything? At a young age, yeah. uh, one of the teams I played on, uh, one of my teammates with Coach Bobby was coaching us, well, had Kevin Abrams. Kevin mm -hmm. went on to Hillsborough High School, Syracuse University, and was a second round draft pick of the Detroit Lions. Wow. Um, played in the NFL. He's still, I think, he, well, he's still here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, some of the guys, uh, Oscar Bryant, who went on to play over at, at Jefferson. Actually, his son just graduated from Jefferson last year and is now playing football at Temple. Now, after playing that small fried for Coach Bobby Wilde, mm -hmm. the next step up may have been the junior high school, mm -hmm. which yes, is middle, middle school now. Did you play in it that level in that high school? Yes, uh, middle school, I went to Villa Madonna. Uh, so from sixth grade to eighth grade, mm -hmm. and I played played there, played basketball. Also participated in other sports as well. While I was there, uh, my sixth grade year, our team went undefeated and won the JV championship. Wow. And then my eighth grade year, my varsity team, we went what twenty eight and zero, oh, and won the won the for the Catholic Youth League, the CYA, the mm -hmm. championship. So we had a lot of success. Uh, Playing there, and then that also around that time, that's when I got involved in AAU basketball. Mm -hmm. So my eighth grade year, I played for a team called Team Tampa. It was an AAU team. It was 15, I think it was 15 and under or 16 and under. But I was the youngest person on the team. Pretty oh. much everybody on the team was yeah. either in ninth grade or they were in tenth grade, and I was the youngest player on the team. So that was a very good experience for me. By being the youngest, you probably. Also, might have been probably one of the top players at that time. Well, actually, in my mind, <laughs> I thought I was. But uh, I, I talk to my players about it all the time. I didn't. I was one of the last people on the bench. Uh, some of it, I think, was because I was the youngest. I was. I guess I could play a little bit, mm -hmm. but because some of the kids were older, I, I don't think that they thought that I could handle it. I guess you could say. But um, after moving from that level, did you play high school ball here in this area? Yes, sir. I played high school basketball at Tampa Catholic High School. Okay. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be a four-year varsity starter. So I started from ninth grade all the way uh, through 12th grade. Uh, I scored 1,344 points. So it's still like uh, in Hillsborough County, I'm on the list in the top players uh, for our scoring points in their careers. Well, we won three district championships while I was there, three consecutive district championships. Uh, we won one regional title while I was there playing. So it was a very good experience overall, top to bottom. Man, you got a lot to look back on <laughs> and to let your kids, your teammates, I mean, you and your teammates did an excellent job. You had championship teams. Yes, sir. And not only did you play basketball, you played some other sports. What were they? Yeah, I also, in my lifetime, played football, I played baseball, I played soccer, and I also played handball. So those and tennis as well. Handball, and, you said? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Handball and tennis. So those were kind of the sports that I played. Most of those, I got my start at the Ebo City Boys and Girls Club. Pretty much, I think every sport itself for baseball. I got my start at the Ebor City Boys. But you know, during that time, guys of your caliber used to like to run a lot and run track. Yep. I'm yes, surprised. sir. I, I did. Got, I did track uh, and field as well. Right. I did that as well. What events did you run in track? I ran 400. I ran the 200. Uh, I ran a lot of relays: the four by four relay, the four by 100 relay. Mm -hmm. I also did participated in the long jump, high jump, and triple jumps as well. Boy, you've had quite an experience as an athlete. Well, first of all, played in high school and all. Many times, guys look forward to getting a grant and aid, a mm -hmm. scholarship, some some place that you have in the office, or that you get a scholarship or have in the offers. Yes, sir. I had probably about fifteen different offers. Okay. Uh, from different schools, and I accept it. Offer to the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, up mm -hmm. in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, it's a Division One basketball program that at that time participated in the Big South Conference, uh, and I was uh, fortunate to go there and also be a starter for 
pretty much three and a half years I was a starting point guard. Starting point guard? Yes, sir. Man, you ran up against some guys. Can you remember some of the top players that moved around the country name-wise or some of the yeah. teammates? Yeah, well, some of, some of the players that I played against, uh, one of my maybe my fourth college game, I played against Jason Kidd. This okay. is when he, the year he came out in the draft, Adam Iverson, played oh, against him. Yeah. yeah, I played against him numerous times yeah. up in the D.C. Baltimore area. Uh, Sam Cassell, Cassell. Um, Jerry Stackhouse, wow. Rasheed Wallace. Uh, I could keep going, but Man, you, you, <laughs> we'll you, be here for a while. Been down the road, then. yeah. I've, I've been but fortunate. Talking about Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. he had that good crossover move. Did you ever have to guard him? And well, and and I talk to my players about this all the time. When I played against Allen Iverson, he had yet to develop that crossover. Oh, okay. Because you know he did everything because he was off, of, off of speed. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we would play against each other in the off season. Uh, there was a gym down in Washington D.C. where all the college players would go play. Mm -hmm. So we would go out and play on Sun on Sundays. We would play from like nine in the morning until Whenever. people got tired. Yes. You know, we played all day, and yeah. he hadn't developed that crossover yet. That came once he got the got NBA, pretty much. Yeah. I know in New York they have that Rutgers League, mm -hmm. and then I went up to New York one summer, and they had. Uh, some of the professional players would mm -hmm. come out with the guys. Did you guys ever have any professional players come out and talk with you or play with you? Or? Well, it was two leagues that I played in when I was in college. Uh, one was called the Kenner League. Mm -hmm. In Washington, D.C., during the 90s, that was like the league to play in. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was all college players. Mm -hmm. Then in Baltimore, I played in the Urban Coalition League. Mm -hmm. That's where you had NBA players as a program league, as well as guys who may have played overseas and college guys playing. So, you know, that's how I got a chance to play against Sam Cassell uh, at the time. I don't know if you got may remember Lawrence Moten that played at Syracuse. I played against him. So there was some there were some professional guys that I got a chance to play against, and you know, guys who also played professionally overseas as well. Any of the players that you coach and I ever ask you about some of this stuff? They ask me all the time. They sometimes don't, they sometimes don't want to believe it, do they? No, they don't. A lot of times they, they can't believe it. Yeah, they'd be over there hunching themselves. Exactly. exactly. Coach, tell us about this. Coach, tell us about that. And they start exactly. punching each other. Well, after you've done such outstanding playing with and against certain players, I know you. Uh, it inspired you in some manner along the way to become a coach. Mm -hmm. Where was this and what time of life was this? Actually, once I got done playing, I said to myself, I want, okay, I want to coach high school. So actually, when I moved back to Tampa, I was assistant, assistant coach at Tampa Catholic. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed it. I was coaching with my high school coach. I was learning from the other side about the coaching, but then, uh, my job didn't allow me to coach after about three years. So I went about three years, four years without coaching at all. And I missed it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. how I got back into it, I was asked to coach uh, an 11 and under AAU team. Where was this? That was here, here in Tampa. Uh, what the, what the, specific area, YMCA? Well, no, it was the, it was the Florida Elite. They, okay. That was the, the program, it was the 11 and, 11 and under team. Mm -hmm. And no, they no, we didn't have like the best players or anything like that. But that was one of my most enjoyable coaching experiences that I've had, just because of getting a chance to work with young guys. They were 10, 11, and they were still learning, and they were very coachable. And we got very, we got better from the time I met them. The, every each one of those kids got better. Some of them went on to play in high school. Uh, one of them actually went on and played uh, playing Division One college basketball. Andre Smith, who went, played at Blake, so you know, got, I got a chance to see how some of those young men developed and are continuing, continuing to develop. After having played with Tampa Catholic and played for Bobby Wise and all, mm -hmm. I didn't hear you call the coach's name for Tampa Catholic. Can you remember him? Yep, it's the, I can. He's still the same coach right now. Well, my first two years, the coach was Kevin Anello. He was the coach my first two years, and my last two years it was Don DeZagua, who's the present coach at Tampa. Yeah, he was the present Don coach at Tampa DeZagua. Catholic. Yes, uh, I'm very familiar with Don DeZagua. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, he had a son play for him recently. I, yep. Yeah, yeah. 
And one thing about them, they always had shooters. Exactly. <laughs> you got to be ready to play some good defense because yeah. they had those outside shooting great teams. So mm -hmm. I went over to a summer program. My grandson, David White, mm -hmm. he went to that program during the summer. And boy, they stress a lot of shooting, yeah. a lot of shooting. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can see when you go up against them now. Now, after you coach the kids during the year, let's talk about some of the things that happen while you're coaching. Do you take them out to games? Or how, do you, how, how, how is this done? First of all, what about the eligibility of a player? How did he become eligible to play for you? Well, first off, they have to maintain a 2.0 GPA mm -hmm. uh, as goes by the state core state standard. Mm -hmm. As well as not just well, I asked for the core curriculum because now you have to have that in order to move on to go to college. Mm -hmm. But they take you know just the state GPA that en engulfs all the elective classes as well as their core curriculum classes. Mm -hmm. So they have a 2.0 for, for that. Uh, that actually is going up with the freshman class last year. That the sophomores now now to get into college, it'll be a 2.3 mm -hmm. in two years. It'll be across the board. It'll be 2.3. So that has been raised up somewhat. Um, once they once they become eligible, we work hard at making sure we keep guys eligible. We have daily study halls, uh, tutoring sessions, where you know, we set stuff up between the teachers and the young men if they need extra help. We also have they have group tutoring sessions. And I've been fortunate to have some pretty smart kids in, in my program. Uh, last year, we were we had the second highest GPA in the county wow. for boys bas basketball behind plant. And this year, you know, I have we have pretty good GPAs as well. So we use a lot of in-house tutoring. Um, for example, yesterday I had one of my players who's reviewing for an algebra two in the course exam. He had one of my kids who took the course last year who's actually helping him. So we do a lot of helping each other as well. Now, when the players finish playing after senior year and coaches come around to talk with them, mm -hmm. do you advise a kid to have the scouts come through you first or you sit and help them plan certain things? What part do you play there? Do you play a part, a role? Do you talk with the parents? Talk to us about that. Well, I do play a role. Um, some, some coaches have contacted myself. Mm -hmm. um, some coaches have actually reached out and contacted the boys. But one thing is the boys all come back and tell me, coach, this coach contacted me, and they ask me questions about you know, what they should, what they shouldn't say, what should be going on. Uh, they sometimes ask me about the school. But uh, you know what I always tell them you when know, they ask me the questions, you guys have a computer, go in there, type in the school name, hit enter, and you can see and hear, uh, and whatever you want to know about the school, you can find out uh, pretty much at the touch of, touch of a fingertip. Uh, we also involve the parents in that as well because we want them to understand what's going on because nowadays a lot of parents aren't educated on what's going on. So each year, uh, at the beginning of the year, I have a parent meeting, and I kind of go over all the NCAA regulations. I give them a copy of the hand of the handout that I use to see if the guys will be NCAA ready, things along those lines. Just try to, to educate the parents so they understand a little bit once that uh, once that time comes. Now I have read a lot about players in basketball getting all exhausted and falling out, and mm -hmm. sometimes players have gone to glory and lost their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have anything to guard against him being overexhausted or falling out at practice? You have any defibrillators or anything yes. like that? Uh, we have one right, right in my office. We have a defibrillator. If something happens, I have access. I've been trained as well as my entire coaching staff as to how to use it uh, and what should be done in those situations. We try to, within my practice, we have built-in water breaks that are built into the practice, but also I never tell a kid that they can't, if they need water, they can go get it. I never tell them, no, you can't, anything like that. Uh, also, um, my players know they can come to me because I keep water throughout the day. So they come to me, coach, can I get a bottle of water? And I give them a bottle. So they have water anytime during the day. They can just come to my classroom or after school, after practice, before practice, they can come. They get hungry, they can get me a peanut butter jelly sandwiches. So you got a few things they they can they always know they have access to, to just to try to prevent 
those you know, dehydration or um, issues from not eating or not being hydrated? I don't know about your plane days, but I can tell you about mine. Mm -hmm. Water was a no-no. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I started coaching, get off that water. Right. We, we <laughs> didn't allow players right. to get water or anything of that right. nature. But now they have these water breaks at football, yeah. mandatory water right. breaks. And in right. basketball, you got to do that. Right. Now, let's talk about your season last year. You mm -hmm. had an outstanding season. Yes, and I know there are a lot of things you were proud of, especially uh, your season record. Mm -hmm. Talk about your season record and some of the top games that you felt you, your players did a good job, and et cetera. Okay, well, we finished the season 27 and 5. Mm -hmm. uh, we pretty much the only team in the Tampa Bay area that we lost to was Tampa Pro. Uh, so we won against a lot of the competition in this area. Uh, our five losses came to some pretty good teams. Uh, one was Jacksonville Jackson, who was a regional finalist in Class 4A. Uh, we lost to Jacksonville Providence, which is, they were the 3A state champions. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost to Tampa Prep, which was a highly ranked team in 3A all season. Uh, we lost to Lakeland High School, who was also ranked in Class 7A. They were in the top five most of the season. And we lost to Miami Norland, who was the eventual 6A state champion. Miami Norland, oh boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've been a nemesis to Jefferson, even football. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, all back through the day. They're a tough team. I think they beat Gainesville in the final, wasn't they? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, because if you had beat them, you would have played, played Gainesville. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of your season, I understand you have awards at the mm -hmm. banquets and all that. Uh, this year, we've been fortunate. Uh, to, as, as a program to get a lot of recognition. Uh, my team was recognized by the Tampa Bay Basketball Coaches Association as Team of the Year, which was you know, very, very pleasing to me. I was, I, like I said, that's voted on by other coaches. So that was by our opponents and other teams to mm -hmm. say that we were the Team of the Year. You know, that, was, that, that was very gratifying. Um, we had a lot of individual awards. Um, we had Maurice Moore, who's one of the top 25 players in Hillsborough County and voted on by the coaches. He also was second team 6A All-State. He was first team All-County, first team All-Area, um, which, you know, bit bold well for him. We also had uh, DeAndre Demands. He was voted All-Academic uh, wow. in Hillsborough County because he has an unweighted GPA of 3.79 unweighted and then his weighted GPA is like 5.7 mm -hmm. something very good student um, then we have two young men who were honored as honorable mention uh, Vernon Jackson and Taj Jenkins they both were honorable mention all county players uh, by both of the newspaper outlets Tampa Bay Times and uh, uh, Tampa Tribune mm -hmm. uh, I was I got a couple of awards as well I was Voted Coach of the Year by wow. the Tampa Bay Basketball Coaches Association. I was also voted Coach of the Year uh, by the Tampa Bay Times, Hillsborough County Coach of the Year. And then I was uh, also received the Western Conference American Division Coach of the Year. Wow, well, where are you going to put all these trophies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, talk about the summer play and after the season you mm -hmm. say you went into the summer play like the YBOA or something yes, sir. like that. Yeah, we've uh we started playing about 2 weeks ago so I guess they say no west for the weary. Uh we start we played in the tournament 2 weekends ago here in Tampa. Uh we also play in a spring league, coaches league that we play in. Uh, we play about 2 games a week. And we started that, we played four games into that. Then we also played in a shootout this past weekend at Hudson High School. And this goes right into summer league, which starts the week after we get out of school. Uh, we have a couple of trips that we have tentatively planned to go play one up in Jacksonville, to go play in the shootout there, and uh, down to Fort Myers for another shootout later in the summer. How many games can you play uh during the regular season, how many can you play off season and how many tournaments? Uh, regular season, you can only play 25 games. That's prior to the district tournament. Uh, that's your limit. You can't go over that limit. 
off seasons, you can play as many as you like. So in our off seasons, we try to play. I try to if we play, I try to play two seasons in the off season because I'm working on a lot of different stuff. So um, you know, we play. We by by November, we probably would have played 50 to 60 games. If you had to talk with a parent about getting a kid to play basketball, what are some of the things you tell them they could get from playing basketball? Well, you, I can say you get a lot of discipline, uh, doing stuff the right way, uh, continuing in, uh, hard work, working as a team, things that uh, carry far go, to, go a, lot, a lot further in, in the regular life. You have to be able to work with people work with others uh, for a common goal, even though, yes, this may not be your best friend, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to work with them. Uh, I think you get a lot of, like I say, with the, the discipline of doing things the right way, doing things in a efficient way as well, not being wasteful. Coach, before we close out very quickly, tell me you must have some bonafide assistance to work with you yes, within sir. the Varsity and the JV program. Tell me about the coaches. Uh, one of my coaches is named Bill Heilig. He was a longtime assistant at Plant High School. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have him come over and assist with me. Uh, Marvin Somerset, who was an assistant at King High School, he came over to assist as well. Dion Thomas, who was one of my coaches when I was younger at the Boys and Girls Club, who uh, came to assist, and Derek Smith, who's a former coach at Middleton High School, is now one of my assistants. Well, Coach, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and we've been, been very much enlightened on your wonderful program at Jefferson High School. We commend you for all of the wonderful things you've done with the kids and you've uh, accomplished for yourself. So we want to say good luck to you, Thank you. and enjoy the rest Thank of your coaching career. That's so that's it for the Tampa Bay Community Network Sports Talk. We certainly hope you've enjoyed the show this day as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. So be with us again on our next show right here on the Tampa Bay Community Network Sports Talk.